This video was brought to you by the TLDR store. And if you want the entire TLDR team to hand deliver your order anywhere in the world, then watch to the end of the video to find out how. On Tuesday, Danes went to the polls to elect a new government, after the incumbent Social Democrats were brought down by a report published a couple of months ago criticising their decision to cull the entirety of Denmark's mink population to protect against Covid during the pandemic. In a bit of a shock result, the Red Bloc retained a narrow but outright majority, meaning that the Social Democrats Met Fredriksson will stay on as Prime Minister. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how a mink culling scandal brought down the government, how the Social Democrats held on to power regardless, and what this might mean for Danish politics going forward. So before we get into the results, a bit of background. The last election in Denmark was held in 2019, when the so-called Red Bloc won a majority with 91 of the 179 seats available, allowing the Social Democrats' leader, Met Fredriksson, to become Prime Minister. Denmark uses the additional member electoral system, which basically means that 139 MPs are elected in multi-member constituencies, and the 40 remaining seats are distributed to match the Parliament to the national vote share. The so-called Red Bloc, a coalition of left-leaning parties led by the Social Democrats, won 49.2% of the vote, which translated into 91 seats. Anyway, the main test for Fredriksson's government was the pandemic, and while she was originally lauded for her effective lockdown policies, which allowed Denmark to reopen its society before most of its European neighbours, her government has been roundly criticised for their decision to cull Denmark's entire mink population in late 2020. For context, Denmark is the world's largest producer of mink furs, with exports amounting to about $1 billion per annum on average, or about 40% of the world's production. Prior to the pandemic, there were somewhere between 13.5 million and 17 million mink across roughly 800 Danish farms. However, in June 2020, Danish authorities detected a strain of Covid, later named Cluster 5, in a mink population in northern Denmark. The authorities ordered that all minks in any farm with even one case of Cluster 5 should be killed to prevent further infection. Unfortunately, this failed to stop the spread of the virus, and by early October, Cluster 5 had spread to over 60 mink farms in northern Denmark. The government then expanded the order to require that any mink within an 8 km radius of a detected case be culled, but once again the spread continued. This was pretty worrying stuff because scientists in the Netherlands had found evidence that Covid could be passed from mink to human, and the Danish authorities worried that this could cause new mutations of Covid in humans, which could in turn undermine vaccine efficacy. This is why on November the 3rd, the Staten Serum Institute published a new risk assessment which concluded that continued mink breeding during an ongoing COVID-19 epidemic poses a significant risk to public health, including the possibilities of preventing COVID-19 with vaccines. The next day, the government ordered the culling of Denmark's entire mink population offering bonuses for farmers that killed their mink quickly. The mink were killed by exposure to carbon monoxide before being either incinerated or buried. This is where things started going downhill for the government. Obviously, the optics here were pretty terrible in the first place. Whatever the epidemiological merits, the government has essentially ordered the genocide of millions of cute fluffy things. This spelled the end for Denmark's mink industry, which had previously employed some 6,000 people. It got worse a month later when some buried mink started resurfacing, because the nitrogen and phosphorus gases produced by their decay had created air bubbles underneath the bodies. This meant that the 4 million or so mink that had been buried had to be dug up and incinerated. On top of this, the government also faced some more substantial criticisms. For starters, there was some scepticism about the idea that new Covid variants transmitted by mink could undermine vaccine efficacy. The Danish Medicines Agency, the University of Copenhagen and the Danish Health Authority all disputed the idea that mink variants would undermine vaccine efficacy, and others also suggested that the total mink cull was unnecessary, 
or at least could have been avoided had the government's original measures been more effective. It also turned out that the government's original order had no legal basis, which is one of the reasons the estimated compensation owed to mink farmers has skyrocketed to about $2.5 billion. For context, that's about half their military budget in 2020. In April 2021, the Danish government set up a mink commission to investigate the whole affair. The mink commission's report was finally published on June the 30th of this year, and it was deeply critical. The report concluded that the government lacked the legal authority to order the mink cull, and criticised certain cabinet members for failing to provide certain information. Fredriksson was forced to call an election in early October after the Social Liberals threatened to withdraw from her coalition, which took place on Tuesday. Now, Danish politics has previously been dominated by the centre-left red bloc, led by the Social Democrats, and a centre-right blue bloc, led by Venstre. However, these elections saw the introduction of the Moderates, a new centrist party formed this year by former Venstre leader and two-time Prime Minister Lars Loke Rasmussen, which refused to align itself with either bloc ahead of the results and looked likely to play kingmaker in the event of a split parliament. This is what the polls were predicting, but in a shock result, preliminary results announced on Wednesday morning suggested that the red bloc had outperformed expectations and secured a narrow 90-seat majority. The Social Democrats saw their best result in more than 20 years, winning 27.6% of the vote and 50 seats. It seemed that voters thought the Social Democrats and the Red Bloc were better placed to deal with the cost of living crisis sweeping Europe, which was the focus of the campaign. Fredriksson said she didn't want to lead another Red Bloc government, instead proposing a new centrist alliance comprising parties from both the Red and Blue Blocs, as well as Rasmussen's new Moderates party, which won 9% of the vote from 16 seats. Fredriksson has proposed something similar in the past, and the two main parties cooperated on a new, larger defence budget in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Her basic argument here is that, in times of crisis, it's not appropriate for the government to have a tiny majority representing only one half of the electorate. A purple alliance would also limit the influence of smaller, more extreme parties, who are often excluded in the red or blue blocs. So far, the blue bloc parties have resisted Fredriksson's proposal, so it remains to be seen whether or not it'll actually happen. It'll definitely take a while to negotiate, which is why it'll probably take weeks, if not months, for the new government to be formed. However, if a purple bloc does emerge, it could usher in a new age of Danish politics, away from a system centred around the left-right divide to a more consensual model of politics. Anyway, in the meantime, while Denmark is agreeing what kind of government it wants to form, you might want to buy some pin badges. And also, luckily, you might be able to meet Team TLDR. We're approaching the 10,000th order at the TLDR store, so to celebrate, we're going to hand-deliver the 10,000th order anywhere in the world. In fact, we're going to record a whole video where the team try to race to deliver your order and try to be the first to arrive. Sounds fun, right? Well, I have great news, because we also have a huge sale right now. All of our iconic pin badges are half price, only £2.99. Or, if you're feeling lucky, you can get a random pin for £1.79, 5 random pins for £5.99, or even 10 random pins for £9.99. Everything else in the store is also reduced, including our magnets and stickers, and we have no plan on restocking any of these items. So, when it's gone, it's likely gone forever. So, if you've always wanted a little piece of TLDR, if you're looking for an early Christmas gift, or if you just want to go for a drink with Team TLDR, now's your time to order. The link to the store is in the description.